Thank you very much, Madam Mistress of Ceremony. You're doing such a brilliant job. No wonder you are the senior sister of Fatu Ben Suda. <laughs> Your Excellency, President Adam Abaru, President of the Republic of the Gambia, the Right Honorable Speaker and Members of Parliament, your Lordship, the Chief Justice and Justices of the Supreme Court, Honorable Members of Government, Honorable Chairperson of the Truth, Reconciliation and Reparations Commission, my brother Dr. Lamin Sise, Honorable Members of the TRRC, Heads of Higher State Institutions, Excellencies, members of the Diplomatic Corps, the Prosecutor of the International Criminal Court, Ms. Fatou Ben Souda, and my other senior colleagues from the UN system, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I stand on protocol already established. Today, a milestone has been reached in the history of this country as we congregate here for the launch of the Truth, Reconciliation and Reparations Commission in solidarity with the people of the Gambia and especially the victims, I am honored to personally witness this historic event. I commend the government under the leadership of His Excellency Adam Abaru, President of the Republic, all political actors, civil society organizations, and the peoples of this beautiful country for their concerted effort in making this a reality. They have shown a preference to live in peace and harmony over violence and fear. I wish to seize this opportunity to thank national, regional, and international partners who are closely working with the government of the Gambia to enhance the respect for the rule of law and human rights. The establishment and launch of the TRRC is a clear indication that the people of this country have resolved to collectively address a difficult period in their history, reconcile and move into the future with renewed optimism for the well-being of each other and their country. I therefore commend the consultative nature of the process through which the Commission was established and hope that it translates through the implementation of its mandate in order to meet the expectations of the population. Today's launch builds a platform for this country to replace a culture of impunity with a culture of accountability, which is vital in all democratic processes. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, it is worth emphasizing that today's event charts a clear path towards national reconciliation. Nonetheless, the truth, Reconciliation and Reparations Commission is not an end in and of itself, but a means to an end. The Commission is expected to create the enabling environment for all Gambians, regardless of their political, religious, and ethnic affiliations, to tell their story relating to the period during which they were subjected to gross human rights violations. It is a mechanism that should promote healing, social cohesion, and tolerance, which ultimately would enhance peace and stability in the country. But for this to happen, the Commission must assure that the truth be known, that the truth be complete, and the truth be officially proclaimed and publicly exposed. The Commission will therefore have to exercise a high level of independence, maintain and protect its credibility, and insulate itself from political considerations. 
Beyond just institutional and financial independence, the credibility of the Commission will depend on the independence and professionalism of its personnel. I therefore urge the government, in line with its consultative approach and commitments towards national reconciliation, to ensure that the independence of appointed commissioners and staff assigned to the Commission is not compromised. Need I remind the Commission and staff of the Commission that this is no easy feat assigned to them as they carry out the expectations of the Gambian people. But I'm convinced that with their support and exercise of their independence, they will succeed. I would like to underline the victims that victims of past human rights violations and abuses constitute a main category of the Commission's constituency and should be placed at the center of its work. I appeal to the Commission to adopt a victim-centered approach with special attention to women, children, and other vulnerable groups, as well as to ensure the adequate, that adequate steps are taking to guarantee the protection of victims and witnesses that appear before the Commission. I'm convinced this will encourage many people to testify. I'm sure you'll join in my expectation that the Commission's influence and work will also contribute to political tolerance and constructive engagement between the main political actors involved in the process of building the new Gambia. The support of political actors, state institutions, particularly those in the sector of security and civil society, will be vital to the success of the Commission. To bilateral and multilateral partners of the government, your support to date has been immense. However, more is expected as this is just the beginning. We are expected to continue providing the requisite support to the Commission, other national institutions and civil society organizations that promote national reconciliation, peace, security, and human rights. The National Human Rights Commission, which is in the process of being established, is a case in point. But we should not lose sight of the fact that our support is not a substitute but a complement to reinforce the government's ownership and leadership of this process. Your Excellency, Mr. President, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, the United Nations, within the framework of the sustaining the peace agenda, continues to avail assistance to the Gambia with a view to supporting nationally-led efforts that would entrench democratic values, improve governance, especially the security sector, and enhance traditional justice and human rights. I seize this opportunity to reiterate what has been said already by the Chairman of the Peace Building Commission, Ambassador Aeon, and by my colleague, Oscar, the commitment of the United Nations to stand with the people of the Gambia in their quest to live in a secure and stable nation built on the foundations of tolerance, equality, good governance, accountability, and respect for human rights. Reconciliation is a long-term process, and for it to be effective, it must occur at individual, community, and national levels. The TRC will be key in this regard. Therefore, operationalizing the TRC is the right thing to do. I wish the Commission every success in its work, and I thank you for your attention. Thank you, too.